What is up, guys? It is the Sportser Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Sunshine State Sports Jabber, part of NGSC Sports, guys. Please remember the website. It's NGSCSports.com for all your current sports content. Hopefully, everyone out there is having a fantastic Friday. My day did not start off uh, too well, uh, but it got better as the day went on. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, hopefully everyone out there is staying safe with uh, the COVID cases back on the rise. Let's hope we can get those numbers down soon. Uh, guys, the Sunshine State Sports Shabber, guys, is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, arenaeats.app. For the ultimate fan experience of your favorite sports venues, Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? Guys, welcome to the sold-out main cave in Pinellas Park, Florida. For the Sunshine State Sports Jabber. Again, I am your host, the sports sir Bradley Walker. Welcome to the Sunshine State Sports Jabber. This is an all Florida podcast, in case you are wondering, all Florida sports. Um, this will probably be an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour to show. Um, guys, I have a YouTube channel called the Sports Sir Bradley Walker. Uh, this show and the other and the show that I do last night with my two great uh co-hosts, Adam Mangold and Lewis Tenure, who Lewis probably will be on here later uh, Later in the show. Uh, the Walker Report also is over there live. Uh, the views are, are going up. I'm so happy and thrilled to see that. If you do go over there, please like, subscribe, and uh, share the video. It would be great to be able to see, you know, a video of ours maybe on, you know, somebody's YouTube, yeah, page or something that's talking about a certain topic. Um, but anyway, guys. Let me uh, dive into uh, tonight. Um, again, like I said, this is an all Florida sports podcast. So welcome in if this is your first time in. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with the Tampa Bay Inferno, which is a ladies, all ladies, women's uh, tackle football league. Uh, now, their season did not end on a well note. They lost in the championship game to Boston um, a couple weeks ago. Um, but, uh, the one, uh, I caught an article from the local Tampa Bay or Bay news, nine, a local, uh, TV station here in Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay area. Um, to clear Roberts is one of the names of that place for the Inferno. Um, she, um, goes by a lot of names Her children call her mom, family and friends call her T. The Department of the Juvenile Justice Girls in her care call, Miss Miss T. So again, she has been one of the ladies that has uh, led the uh, Inferno to where they are. Um, they had an undefeated regular season uh, and lost in the championship game to Boston. Uh, guys, I just will have to say this: I just found out about this team uh, just a few weeks ago, and I'll tell you what: um, I gave them a donation. Uh, for their playoff, I'm hoping next year to maybe go to a game live. It would be kind of cool maybe to get press credentials to their games next year. That would be kind of cool to go see uh, women's tackle football uh, next year. That would be something uh, pretty darn cool. Their season, guys, starts in July, so they're a summer league, so I'll be looking forward to that next year. Guys, I'm also being shown on Coast to Coast Entertainment. At least I think I hope I'm still being seen on there. Uh, I sent the link to the Chris who used to come on here. Uh, I don't know if, if I'm still being shown on there, but if I'm not, then I will no longer mention that. But if I am, then I am being shown on coast to coast entertainment, but that's all the inferno news. I really have for you guys. There is again, their season did not come to the greatest of endings. They were hoping uh, for a better ending for the championship. As like I said, they did go undefeated during the regular season. Um, let me go ahead, guys, and uh, let me jump now to where should we go? Let's go to the NBA. Uh, I'll start with the Orlando Magic. Uh, again, the NBA draft was last night, or round one of the NBA draft was last night. Um, I'm going to read an article from BleachReport.com on who were the winners and losers uh, from the 2021 NBA draft. So let's see where the Heat, the Orlando Magic was a winner. The Magic uh, were more likely anticipating a future trying to fit Scotty Barnes and Jonathan Isaac until the Toronto Raptors pick Scotty Barnes going four made Orlando decision very easy by allowing Jalen Suggs to be their number five pick. 
And though Cole Anthony had a promising rookie year, he's not a completed Suggs, better passer and more active defender. So Orlando did do very well uh, in their thing there. Um, so they were one of the ones who um, who did very, very well in the draft last night. They did have some picks. I think they had two picks in the top. Uh, they had two picks in the top um, in the uh, in the top ten. The the Magic had two picks within the top ten. So um, now, despite some disappointment, their outlook does look great. Uh, the Magic did part ways with Steve Clifford, uh, the head coach. Um, so upon Kojak, it was detailed the team wanted to extend the coach but differences of overachieving goals so the magic did change head coaches um and they picked up um mosley let me see if i can find his first name that would be great to go with the rest of this um let's see here they do have a new head coach um in orlando to try to get the ship back on track uh this is a team that has really really um really struggled uh they drafted jalen suggs and france wagner that was who they they had they picked yesterday now again guys with the orlando magic it is a rebuild okay plain and plain and simple the orlando magic are in a rebuild that that's just how it goes guys this team Two years ago, during the bubble, they were in the they were in the bubble as the AC. Last year, they uh, not last year it was it was horrible. It was a bad season for Orlando. Um, so they're hoping with Mosley and as their head coach, some of the picks they made. It's going to take a while for this team. Obviously, this is a long way away from the Penny Hardaway Shaq days where they were in the playoffs or the hell they were in the finals, um, the NBA finals when they lost to the Rockets. But I mean, this team is far, far away. Definitely the start of a rebuild in Orlando, which only can lead to one or two conclusions. One, this team gets better over the next couple years or two, they take a step back and they get worse. And then the rebuild starts over again. Till they find the right combination of a coach and or players to get the magic then back on track. Um, so yeah, so definitely it's a definite rebuild for Orlando, but they did very well in the draft. According to BleacherReport.com, they are a winner in the first round of the draft. So let's see how these young players work out. Maybe the magic miraculously make the playoffs next this upcoming NBA season. Uh, we'll definitely have to wait and see. Uh, what the season um, is, it you know, gathers um, for that. But, I mean, that's very, very interesting how that all went, you know, went down. Like I said, guys, uh, I told you a couple weeks ago on this show that I would not have any NBA news unless there was news. Well, the draft was last night, and uh, the Miami Heat, guys, did not have a first-round pick. That is correct. The Miami Heat did not have a first-round pick. Uh, in this year's draft. Um, so they have to depend really on free agency and the returning cast. Now, this team, again, was in the East Trend, was in the NBA Finals two years ago in the bubble in Orlando and lost to the Lakers in six games. So this team took a huge step back this past season. And Pat Riley is trying again to get the right uh, combination of players uh, to get this team back to where they were two years ago. Because again, this team was in the NBA finals um, two years ago when they were playing against the Lakers. Um, but again, they, you know, a lot of fans are upset of Dwayne Wade having a uh, minor ownership of the Utah, I think it's the Utah Jazz, who he's a minor owner of. Uh, they're upset about that because, you know, Wade was their boy for so many years. Um, you know, LeBron and obviously uh, Chris Bosh led them to multiple things. Um, now, again, the NBA draft ends with the, with the Heat not having a first-round pick. Um, now they have 
Okay, so now, despite having $5.6 million available to purchase a pick and any other resources to trade when the Heat opted not to make a move in the draft, um, it marked the third draft in the past six that Miami has not made a pick in, and it also did not have a selection in 2016 or 2018. So think about this, guys. This is within the last five or six years, this team has not made a um, made a pick um, at all. So that's very interesting. Uh, the market price of a second-round pick was set hours before the draft on Thursday morning with 76% cent. $2 million to the Pelicans for the number 53 pick, while the Heat do not have enough cash available to possibly purchase two second-round picks based on what it took. So it's just to acquire one, Miami didn't buy its way into the draft. So again, like I said, guys, this is the second time, third time in the last five years that this team has not had a first-round pick, um, which is very interesting to think about that. They did not have a first-round pick. Um in there that's that's very very interesting at the miami heat uh you know in 2016 2018 and now in 2021 the team did not have a first round selection which to me is very very interesting um now i know you don't have to draft anybody to be a good team that's very very true i think it helps it can help you and it can also hurt you too because if you pick the wrong guy and it doesn't work out well then it goes sideways rather quickly and you know that's that um but uh it, it's just very very odd to not see a team not have a first overall first round pick and again uh maybe that pat riley doesn't want to spend the money to make trades or anything else to get that pick so he's confident with what uh, Eric Spostra and company have in line in Miami, you know, for next season. Um, we'll have to, you know, of course, wait and see, um, you know, what, um, um, what is going to happen uh, with the Miami Heat moving into the future. Obviously, again, they are, we're a good team. They just, I think, took a, Took an interesting step back last year. Unfortunately, they took a step in the wrong direction last year, and that's the unfortunate part about uh, the Miami Heat. Let's see if they bounce back this season and get back in the thick of things in the Eastern Conference. Uh, guys, I'm going to go now to soccer, and I'll start with the local team, the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Um, unfortunately, guys, I was supposed to go to a game a couple weeks ago, actually last week, last Saturday, um, and I was supposed to go with a group of friends. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have anyone that wanted to go with me, so I skipped it and went to MetroCon in Tampa instead. Anyway, that's another another story. Um, well, let me talk about the Tampa Bay Rowdies real quick. Um, they've had some losses here or there, but guess what, guys? Just real quick, the stadium that they play in, Al Lang Stadium, again at one time used to be a minor league stadium for the St. Louis Cardinals. The city council of the, of St. Petersburg uh, met with the Rowdies and requested a one-year renewal to manage and maintain and operate Outlaying Stadium in downtown St. Pete. The agreement between St. Pete and the Rowdies requires the team to be notified city administration. They wish to negotiate agreement with terms of less than three years. Uh, they have locked it up. Plus just a one-year extension with the current agreement expiring on November 30th of this year. So um, the Rowdies, of course, now have had requesting a one-year extension at this point. The to current agreement also includes modifications to allow them to request an extension for longer than the current three years moving forward. Uh, if the team any other modifications or additional provisions for the city to consider, it has until May 1st of 2022 to present those to city administration but the amendment will require the city council to approve, vote and approve on. Alang Stadium sits in downtown St. Pete and has a total capacity of 7,227. Originally built in 1947, it is named after the former mayor who was instrumental in bringing minor league and spring training baseball to the city. However, it would have uh, it would host its last spring training game in 2008. And Crimson will be re renovated to better host soccer after the Rowdies begin to call the stadium home 
in 2011. Now, the uh, has been expanded, guys, to 18,000. Uh, potential move to move to Major League Soccer. Although the solid team, the Tampa Bay Rays organization, 2018, they have continued to com uh, compete in the USL. So, again, guys, they did get the approval uh, for just one year. Um, if they want to play there longer than, than that one year, they're going to have to do that. Um, again, you know, we'll have to wait and see how they, you know, what happens. They are currently owned by Stu Sternberg, who also owns the Tampa Bay Rays. So once again, guys, it comes down to, to that. Now, as far as it on the field goes, the Rowdies may soon have good news on the injury front. Midfielder Lawrence Wilk appears to be closer to returning as Tampa Bay has two games on the slate um, this week. Um, so, again, trying to get him back. Uh, let me go ahead, guys, real quick and check on the uh, standings in the USL uh, so far. So, let's see. let's see. USL standings. Let's see where the Rowdies currently are at um, in their division. Um, they are currently, guys, still in first place. Now they are tied with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Uh, Tampa Bay has played 14 matches. They have nine wins, no draws, five losses. They've allowed, scored 21 goals, allowed 12. They have a plus nine goal differential and 27 points. The River Hounds have played 15 matches. They are 8, 3, and 4. They've scored 20 goals, allowed 15. They're a plus 5 in the goal differential and have 27 points. The team that they, the Hartford, um, has only played 12 matches. They are 7, 2, and 3. They have 24 goals uh, scored, 13 allowed, and a plus 11. Uh, they are, uh, they have 23 points currently right now. So, Good evening, Lewis. Um, oh, good. It's working. <laughs> um, so, again, guys, the Rowdies are still on top of their division in the Eastern Conference. But, I mean, they're they're tied for the lead right now with Pittsburgh. Hmm. Um, let me see where they, they play now. They have a match. They won their last match last Saturday. They beat London United 3-1. to one. They play Charlotte uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, so that is the next match for the Rowdies. And it will be on the road um, at American Legion Memorial Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, so that the Rowdies win and Pittsburgh somehow loses, they will move back. And actually, they play the Pittsburgh Riverhounds on August 18th in Pittsburgh. So that's at 6 p.m. So the next time the two teams will match up against each other, uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think, guys, the next home game for the Rowdies um, is, let's see next home game it might be the 28th yes the 28th of august at 7 30 against charlotte so they that's their next home game they have three games in between that are all on the road so that is where the rowdies stand um i assume this is minor league baseball no this is uh usl soccer this is soccer oh, oh all right yeah, nice. this is soccer yeah this is not major league soccer this is the level I know it is. you know what usl soccer is yeah I read the back pages too. <laughs> this is the level uh, underneath it. But I will jump to Major League Soccer. I'm going to start right. with the firestorm that is known as Inner Miami. Um, uh -huh. uh, I believe I read an article earlier today that um, Beckham owns the worst team in Major League yeah. Soccer right now. Um, yes, there it is right there. Inner Miami. David, David Beckham owns. Uh, the worst uh, team in Major League Soccer. Um, and, you know, you could tell me, Lewis, because you watch MLS. What is it with this team? Is, is it just not good, or what is it? I, they I haven't really been good, and they haven't much of a draw either. I mean, I was – you know, you would think with Beckham at the helm, uh, it was going to help, you know, solve the problem, but it hasn't done much. You know, uh, that's what happened also with the um, – the last time Miami had a team, and they didn't do so well either. So, I think it's just the you know the bad the, the the bad area itself. So my you you say Miami's not really a soccer town, is what? No, not at all. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, because I mean, now their owner, the I mean, the other, I think the other owner, I think Beckham is a uh, minority owner, or maybe he's a major owner. I'm not really sure how the ownership is all equal. To yeah. Um, now their head coach is in full support of him, so he believes in Beckham. Um, I have another article up here that says something about they. There was a video when they were playing against Philadelphia where they were seeing lack of effort from their forwards. I mean, the Philly uh, Union? Uh, let me see if I can get that video up here, Lewis, because I haven't even seen it either. Let's see if yeah, yeah. I can play this without getting copy striked, <laughs> copyright <laughs> claimed. Let's see if I can do it without Yeah, there seems to be a rash of that, of that epidemic lately, too. Copyright claim here. Um, copyright my ass. Yeah. I agree with you on that one. Mm, that'd be going to tell you. Copyright my ass. <laughs> Dot com. Dot com. There you go. <laughs> let's see. Um, let's see if I can get the video to yeah. up here. I think, see, the, the page that I'm on is the video that I'm looking for is not loading. Of course. Why would I not? Why would it not? Hmm. <laughs> Remember, any use of the pictures by this is not without the express written consent of any of us running this party is strictly prohibited. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. If you have the audacity to do so, I'll have to come kick your ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's here. Yeah. Um, exactly. um, yeah. So again, I there there uh, there's a video out there, guys. I can't get my video actually to work at the media moment, but I guess there were times where they were showing lack of, uh, but again, if yeah. playing for the worst team in MLS right now, as as we say, um, yeah. So why would again? I guess giving effort when you're losing is is something that is actually a uh, is uh, happens in all sports. <laughs> <A losing laughs> you effort. just give a losing effort, yeah. So that is that is that. But one of the teams that's actually shining in yeah. Major League Soccer. Is this team right here, and that's Orlando City. Orlando, they're one of the shining teams in um, Major League Soccer so far this season. Um, yeah. Where are? What are? Okay, hang on a second. Let me go to standings real quick and find out where Miami and Orlando fall as far as the MLS. Let's see here, MLS standings. There we go. Okay, so Orlando is currently tied for second with New York. They have 16 matches played. They are 7, 5, and 4. 24 goals scored, 20 allowed, plus 4 goal differential. They have 26 points. So they're tied with New York, who also has 26 points. And the New England Revolution have 33 points. So they're ahead of them in the division. But Orlando is still in second place that would make the fight excuse me the final seven in the eastern conference would go they would be part of that their miami right now has a whopping nine points with a net nick 13 differential um so that's yeah they have moved below chicago and toronto toronto at one time was the worst team in mls on the east side so now they're not um so um yeah, so that's 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 Orlando's off to a very decent start so far into the season. Uh they have a match coming up. Actually they're playing right now. They're tied one to one in the fifty-fifth minute with Atlanta United. So they're playing as we speak right now. Their next match is against Inter Miami this upcoming Wednesday at eight PM. So that should be interesting to see how they do. Um, on the road, but right now they're it's one to one in the fifty fifth minute, mm. uh, as of as of right now. So Orlando City again is one of those teams that is one of the better teams um, on the Eastern Conference side of the uh, of MLS. The ladies' team is Orlando City, who are owned by the same um, same people that own or owner the Orlando. I'm sorry, the Orlando Pride. Are owned by the same owners as the Orlando City. Um, they made an official. Uh, the Will family now officially completes the purchase of both the city and the Pride. 
Um, they also hired Mark Skinner, uh, Manchester United, as the women's uh, former Orlando Pride head coach to a two-year deal. Uh, mm. so there is that as well. Um, the Pride, of course, has a lot of players in the Olympics, as a lot of teams do right now going on in women's soccer. Uh, I believe the USA got to the finals. I think they beat the Netherlands in a shootout. I think I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, I haven't really been watching the Olympics that closely, so I don't know what's going on in soccer, uh, on the soccer side of it. Um, but that is my soccer news, so we can move now into hockey. Now, we just had free agency happen, so I'll start with the Florida Panthers. Um, here's what they did on most of their on their first day. Um, they they uh, gave Carter Verhage an extension. Um, one of the players who used to play for the Lightning, they gave him an extension. Um, the Panthers also brought Maxim Avenia back in the fold, thinking the 26-year-old rush into a one-year contract worth 975 k uh, so he's one of the guys. Juno Lanaco is a player who went through a similar situation, returned to the KHL. So he's back on a one-year deal. Uh, they uh, Zito signed Carter Greggy, broke out with 18 goals, 18 assists, and 43 during the 2000. He got a three-year extension worth 12.5 million. Uh, the new deal will not kick in until the start of the 2022-2023 season. Greggy mm. will finish off his current contract at 1 million. Uh, this season. So again, the Panthers didn't really do a lot of movements on free agency, but just like I said in the past, this team is on the rise and everyone in the state of Florida should be put on hold. Even though the Lightning have won two Stanley Cups in a row, this yeah. team is coming. Um, the Panthers are coming. Let me just say yeah. that right now. They are a good hockey team. They're a solid hockey team. Uh, this is not the joke that they used to be in the National Hockey League. They're not that anymore. Uh, they got Coach Quinville. He's turning that team around. Uh, so, like I said, be on the lookout. I would say the Panthers could be a good team this upcoming season. Yes. And make a run as one of the top four in the division with the Lightning, Toronto, and I think Boston, Toronto, Tampa Bay, and Florida will be in the thick of it when it's all said and done at the end of the season. Most likely it's going to be the Boston Bruins. As that's what I've heard from a lot of uh, it's going to be the Bruins. So we'll have to wait and see. I guess they just don't go away. <laughs> I guess the Bruins just don't. No, go they away. don't. I guess no, they just keep retooling. They keep retooling exactly. Um, the other team, guys, I cover is like I said, the back-to-back -back, um, Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, again, they the big news obviously was signing Braden Point to an eight-year extension which means now they have him uh, solidified for the next nine seasons. Uh, the core of the team, uh, Stamkos, Hedman, Point, Kucherov, and um, uh, Vasilevsky are all signed for a long-term deal. So the core of the team is still signed. The team made some moves. They traded away Tyler Johnson for Brett Seabrook. Seabrook is retired, so that he's not going to play for the Lightning. Um so that's not what happened. They signed Corey Perry to a two-year deal who played against them in the Stanley Cup Finals <laughs> with Montreal yeah. last year. Oh, they, they signed Corey Perry? I hadn't seen that. Yep, they signed Corey Perry yesterday. Yep, signed Corey that Perry. That sucks. So, um, but speaking of that, the Lightning mm -hmm. did trade Mitchell Stevens to the Detroit Red Wings today also. So For was, what? I don't know what. I think with cash or something, but I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But they traded him. They traded Mitchell Stevens to um, Detroit today. So, yeah, it's kind of similar. Uh, we kind of compare it to what Adam Ernie was too. We just didn't. We don't have enough playing time for everybody, and it's nice to see these guys get some playing for a time pick. For a pick, okay. There you go. And we we lost Glenn Denning, so it's nice to. It's a good deal. I'm happy with it. Stevens will be a good player. He's a good player. He'll be he'll be solid, just like Adam Ernie was too. They're both solid players for Iserman and company um, down there. Yeah. So. That's kind of a. Of course, they don't show. I, mean, I just want to look at something real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, 
his face off percentage. What was his face off percentage like? Was he then pretty I, decent? I would say decent, bud. I would say decent. Yeah. Mm hmm. 50, 60%. Oh, yeah. I'll take him. <laughs> 52 and a half in the regular season, 60% in the playoffs. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm good with that, especially for a pick. I didn't have to give up anybody for him. Yeah. There you go. There you we'll go. take him off your hands, no problem. We have to lo- losing Glenn Denning to um, Dallas. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. Um, on a kind of on a kind of more uh, sour note, um, our the singer, the lady that sings the national anthem at all the Lightning home games, um, is going through a uh, rough time health wise. Mm-hmm. There was Sonia Bryson Kirsty is her name. Um, she has spent uh, oh more than a week in a COVID nineteen unit battling the Delta variant. So, mm-hmm. gosh, she has COVID, but she has underlying health issues such as multiple sclerosis. Doctors oh God damn! In the hospital for at least another week and a half. There has been a GoFundMe page cre- uh, created for her, um, so they're 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 selling T-shirts and stuff for her. Um, so again, guys, keep her in her thoughts and prayers. Uh, right. She has yeah. a hell of a voice. Uh, if she yes, is, she does. I've heard her. She um she gives everyone goosebumps. I know I get goosebumps every time I hear her sing. Either just the nat- just our national anthem or both because she sings a Canadian national anthem when there's a Canadian team right um, in town in town. Uh, so again, guys, there um, um, here. Let me let me share the screen real quick. Okay. And show you what the shirt looks like because she always wears yeah. blue um, lipstick. So let me show you. Mm, that's kind cool. Of, uh, let me let me show you what the shirt that they they created for her. Hang on just a second. Let me see if I can bring this up. See if that yeah, there it goes. There it is. Actually, right there. Oh, that's cool. There. So there's the shirt that they are trying that to, to help her with her medical. And by the way, also too, she's uh retired military. So oh, okay. that too. She's oh. a she was a soldier. So she yeah. So mm. guys, yeah, she got mad respect because <laughs> she used to be a, a soldier as well. So yeah, it's that uh so again. Again, guys, uh, everyone out there that watches this show or anyone out there, just keep her in your prayers. Hopefully she can get over the Delta variant of COVID because <laughs> obviously it hit her. Um, so that is that. But again, the lightning and the, now we have, what, two months, two and a half months before hockey gets back up in October, September. Yeah. Preseason hockey's in September, so about a month and a half. So... Yeah, it'll be a little bit of a while before we we have hockey back in the back in the if, pool. If you want to uh, make a purchase, you go to one seven seven one designs. Yeah. Dot com, and it's uh, twenty eight dollars. Correct. Yep. Well, thank you, Bud, for sharing that. In case anyone out there wants to go, yeah. yep. Yeah. Curious and wanted to wanted to help. And it takes about 10 days to get it in. Yeah. All right. So let me go ahead now. Um, I'll move to baseball. Again, not really. Of course, the deadline happened today. I don't – I think the deadline, the Major League Baseball deadline is over. Um, Four o'clock. Four, Four o'clock. o'clock. Okay, so yeah. It's been over for about five hours, five and a half hours. So let's see – what the Marlins did as far as that. Um, let's see here. We'll go to the fishandstripes.com. That is their uh, SB Nation website uh, uh, here. So they away. Marlins have completed their third deal of trade week, sending Adam Duvall to the Braves for 25 year old catcher Alex Jackson. Okay, I think there, I don't think the Marlins made any big deals. I don't think so yeah. either. Small, yeah, small related deals. Kind of a, kind of just a standing pat kind of deal because they weren't really going to make any. They're not in a position to make a move to make the playoffs. So correct. Oh, no, that is, you know, and it, if you're not, 
if you're kind of in that position where you're not going to make the playoffs, but you're not horrible, you might as well keep everybody and look at free agency at the end of the year and continue to build on what you have. Yeah. Now, I don't know if the Mar- maybe the Marlins are horrible and they just don't have anybody to get rid of anymore because they've gotten rid of everybody. Yeah. Uh, let I- me see. Yeah, let me see brother, where they exactly stand. I know they're in the NL East. Let me see where they stand right now. No, um, the standings. And they trail the Yankees one nothing in the bottom of the seventh right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. With two outs in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning. Yep, they're down one nothing. And the Rays are up 7-3 over the Red Sox. Um, and that's the, Trop- the game that I got on. Mm. At Tropicana Field. Um, uh, they're last in the East at 44-58. and 58, Ten games okay. back. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they're 14 back of the wild card spot. So, yeah. That, yeah, I, I, think, I think, like you said, I think you stay pat. I don't think you trade away any, any of your future. I think you just say, you know what, right. we're in a good spot with who we have and try to build next year. Obviously, Jeter and company um, can build next year and get the team back on pad, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't think they didn't make any big moves. It wasn't like they had to make any big moves. I don't think they could, like you said, I don't think they have the trading power to make any big moves anyway. Or they don't, and, and not only that, but they don't have anybody to give up. You know, yeah. they don't have any big names to to move. They don't have a you know a, a, a top pitcher or a prize you know bat that you'd want to want to move. That's got a big you know thirty Correct. million dollar contract at the in you know in his mid thirties that you're trying to offload so you can get younger and have and free up cap space. Correct. That's correct. Yep. That would be correct. Now. The other team that calls Florida home for baseball did make some moves. And some nice moves, yes. too. They uh, they got Nelson Cruz. Obviously, that was one of the big picks uh, that the Rays did earlier in the week. They traded away Rich Hill to the Mets. Um, and they got younger. Got yep. younger there in the, on the pitching staff. Uh, I think he'll pro- he'd be a bullpen arm, I would imagine. Right. So they're going to the they- Yeah, they're going with Michael Waka. I think is who they were mm. trying to hold on to. Um, again, oh, wow. they, they have a young nucleus in Randy Rose Arena and Wander Franco, who I got to see mm-hmm. make his major league debut. Um, the kid's a stud. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that right now. Um, so, again, um, they, they made some moves to obviously try to get past – um, I go Boston the Red I Sox go both made some trades mm-hmm. for bats because they had to catch yeah. up. The Rays got Nelson Cruz, so yeah, yeah. Um, the the, the uh, Red Sox brought in Kyle Schwarber. The Yankees got Joey Gallo and Anthony Rizzo. I think yes, they're making some moves for bats. So obviously the right, you know, they that was an after afterthought after the Rays had already made their move. Yeah, so I you know I. I the Rays obviously have enough. The one thing that's going to be the biggest question down the road is, can they score runs when they need to? They got to score runs more inconsistently than they do now. That's the biggest problem with the Rays. It has been for a while. Um, can Cruz help them with that? Yes, absolutely he can. Yes. But it's got to be mm-hmm. a team effort. It can't just be one guy. They can't rely yeah. on one guy. To do and you can't be hitting solo shots in the third inning. And that's it. Right. You're correct. Yeah, that's it. You know, it, it's got to be seventh inning on, and it's got to be hitting. You've got to be. You've got to be scoring runs. Yes. Like right now, you're only up. You're up by four in the bottom of the seventh. One on, no outs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is. You know, you've got. This is when the. When the when the ooh, that was a strike. Um. This is when you need your, you know, you're in the bullpen. Mm-hmm. This is when you've got to be able to, you got to be able to score runs. You yep. got to be able to put, you know, put a run or two on the board in the seventh, in the eighth, in the ninth. Right. Well, you can't hit a solo shot in the third inning, and you know, lose the game three-one. That's correct. Yeah. So that's the Rays definitely have to get better with scoring. 
I think too, you know, they they beat the Yankees 14 to nothing yesterday. They're they scored seven runs yeah. today against Boston. So they're scoring runs again, but the problem is they'll score a lot of runs and then all of a sudden they can't score one or they only scored three and they yeah. lose seven to three. So they gotta be more yeah. consistent with like you said, yeah. you can't get those solo shots in the third inning when you're down three to one or you're down four to nothing after three innings. Yeah. You can't do that. You know, so or have- you know, you, you you hit a you hit a two run shot in the third inning and it's two nothing and then you know the pitching staff gives up three runs. Correct. That's correct. Yep. And you strand you strand six in, in scoring position. Yeah. You leave them loaded in the you leave them loaded yeah. in the six, you leave two on yeah. in the seventh, and then you you never have another scoring opportunity for the rest of the game. Well, that's another, that's, that's another issue, too, but yeah, they have a lot of people yeah. on base. Yeah. yeah. So they got to do away with that as well. They can't, can't leave a lot of men on base either. So, yeah. But, but that is In, not, What's up, bud? I was going to say, this is a great box score. Yeah. Two in the first, two in the third, two in the fourth, one in the fifth. That's what you're yeah, looking for. Right, Joe. Consistency. Yeah. Consistency among the innings, absolutely. All right, let me go ahead, guys. I'm going to jump to the National Football League. I'm going to start in Duval County. The Jacksonville Jaguars, obviously, guys, training camp, as we all know, has opened. So there will be some right. camp yeah. news going on. Um, Trevor Lawrence has shined, as I've read everything about so far, that he has been – he has shined at camp. Um even making the great Tim Tebow look good. Yeah, I did say great <laughs> when I say that. Um, but he, uh, there's still a, there's still, I, 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 I don't, you know, I don't think Tebow makes the final 53 man roster. I really don't. No. I will be. I he is an outside shot. Obviously, the preseason is going to determine a lot of things. Um, that's going to determine a lot of things will be the preseason. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, we'll definitely have to wait. He makes it, but so far, uh, DJ Chark, um, is, is, you know, has, is, uh, doing very well. Um, coach, coach urban Meyer has been happy, uh, with, with him and Trevor Lawrence, which is good because again, guys, Trevor was supposed to be the hero, in Jacksonville, um, mm-hmm. and savior, the savior, if you will, um, with a rookie head coach. So we'll see how it all shakes up uh, for the Jaguars. Um, I want to say I think we talked about them earlier. Maybe winning, I can see them winning between four and five games. Yeah, I can definitely see them winning between four and five. I don't think there's going to be more than that. If they do win six, I would be shocked with the 18 game season. I could see it be. I could see them being five and twelve or four and thirteen when it's all said and done. Um, we'll see how that yeah. all goes down. But um, so far, good news for Jaguar fans for um, you know for their rookie quarterback and their rookie head coach uh, to start off. Uh, the Miami Dolphins um, are also um, a team that. Again, has improved over the last few years. Um, and Tua is off to a decent start in training camp from what I read today. Uh, and um, Xavier and Howard, who they drafted, I think was that, that's the first pick, right? Is that who the Dolphins took in the first round? Or is that Jay and Waddle? Waddle was, Waddle was the first pick. Howard's yeah. been there a couple of years. I think Howard wants out. I think he wants, he demanded a trade, I think. Yeah, he wants a new. He wants a new deal. Before he shows up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, that's kind of the first issue that Brian Flores has so far to start the off season is he has a player who wants a new contract and isn't going to or wants to trade or wants to be traded. Um, but two has done very well. Jalen Waddle has done very well, despite I think I read earlier today that he had a foot injury um, that. Yeah. Uh, is minor, nothing major. Uh, so speaking of nothing to do with any of the teams I cover on this show, <laughs> you guys see that uh, 
uh, uh, what's his name in Indianapolis is out in Wentz is, yeah, Wentz has been Arthur shut down. Wentz has been shut down with a foot injury. That's, yeah, that's a big blow to the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I thought that team would be the the team that would win would be fighting with Tennessee in the AFC South. But if Wentz <sighs> play, it's going to be interesting to see who their backup is. Is that because Bursette's gone, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. back up. Where is he at? Um, I don't know where he's forget where he's a backup now. He's a backup somewhere. Miami, I know the Miami Dolphins. Okay, there you go. So he's in Miami. So he's backing up Tua now. So there you right. go. You go. Um, um, go ahead. I was gonna say something. Oh, I, I, was, I was about the Dolphins. Is there, you know, they had that scare in the first, um. Mini camp with two when he threw five picks. I was like, yes. it's mini camp. I'm not worried about it. Well, let's get into some game action and. Well, I I gotta ask. Then I'll worry about freaking out. I gotta out. ask you guys a question. Um, how many snaps do you think the starting quarterbacks will take for Miami? Uh, well, for for Miami and for Tampa Bay, I'm not gonna say anything about Jacksonville because Lawrence is a rookie. So they'll start him. He's going to get more yeah. than a lot of. But how many snaps do you think Tua takes? How many snaps do you think Brady takes in the preseason? If not any or very few or three series. You... Yeah. Okay. One one quarter. One quarter. Okay. I think, you, I think you play one quarter this week, three quarters next week, and then um, they probably won't play at all in the third game. Maybe yeah. one series in the third game. Yeah, I agree with that. This is the last week without football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here are the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. Um, I heard today locally on the radio because of some of the local uh, sports guys were at training camp today, and Bruce Arians was not happy. Um, is he ever happy? happy? No. Uh, He's like Bill Belichick in that regard. They'd be up by 50 and he'd still be throwing a fit. Uh, 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 again, he was not very, very happy with uh, what was going on today. Um, again, a lot of times the, the Buccaneers did get their Super Bowl rings. Um, in a private. Have, have you haven't? Oh, yeah, my God. Have you seen their ring? Unbelievable. It's gaudy as hell. Did you, did you see that the middle of it pops out and there's a – indentation of Raymond James Stadium in the middle. No, of I didn't see that. Yeah, I mean, take, I a look. take a look. Here, let me let me see if I can pull it up and I'll show right. it to you guys. Just there's 371, there's 317 diamonds. Yeah. Or 3, 319 diamonds. Right, yeah. They, uh, let's see here. Tampa Bay Bucks. Let's see. If, uh, yeah, it's it's very gaudy looking, but it does open up in the middle uh, to show Raymond James Stadium. Yeah, that's right here. Let me share the screen with you. This is uh, on Etsy's. This is Tom Brady's ring or what it looks like. So let me share this real quick with you guys to show yeah, you. Yeah, a replica? The... I think it's a replica, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I can't. I can't imagine you buying oh. a be able to buy a Super Bowl ring on Etsy. But then again, you never know. Yeah, right. Uh, it is. There it is. See how right here, this. If I can, I don't think. Wow. I can. Yeah. It, it's a pop up. Oh yeah. Raymond James Stadium. That's incredible. It shows their their wins, Washington, against the Washington Football Team, against the Saints, against the Packers. And then against Kansas City. So the scores, the four wins that they had to get to the Super Bowl. And then right here, it says it reads something about that it's the first time a team has ever hosted a Super Bowl and won it. So yep. there you go. Yeah, this must crazy. be yeah, it must be a replica because yeah. it's for 50 bucks. So I think we can all say that that's a replica. <laughs> because yeah, there's yeah. no yeah. way in hell no. a Super Bowl ring for 50 bucks. No, not a real one. <laughs> not a real one. Yeah, no. no. I, would, I, mean, I would say fifty grand, maybe you get a real one, but you know, you know, that, what do I know? So would you say it has three hundred diamonds on it? Three hundred nineteen diamonds. 
Yeah, that's insane. They won 31 to 9. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yep. So there's there's a backstory to the whole yeah. why the there's so many diamonds on that ring. Um that's now, a fine you'll happily pay. Yeah. Um now the Buccaneers have pushed um to they're wearing different color wristbands at training camp for players that are vaccinated and yeah. players that are unvaccinated. And Bruce Arians is have of course, like anything else, you gotta answer questions about why they've done this, but he's not uh doesn't really care. He's saying, you know what? Um as with everything else, you know, if you're not vaccinated, you leave yourself out yeah. there for, you know, things to happen. And your employer can make, I guess, in a way they can make you get vaccinated. I guess there's a lot of jobs out there that are making mm -hmm. you get vaccinated uh, if you want to keep your job. So, um, but that is that. But they're taking, he's taking some criticism about the whole wristband thing with, um, with his players. So that is it. I mean, really, there's not much to report, guys. The Bucks did not really bring in any new players. It's basically no. the same team it was last year. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Despite Gennaro Bernard being the only addition um, as a third down back out of the backfield, I think that leaves Keyshawn Vaughn, their second-round pick from a few years ago, kind of on the outside looking in. He's got to step up. And he's got to go win himself a spot on the roster. Because uh, Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette are probably going to be your two starting you, running backs. You, you uh, presumptive starters. Yeah. yeah. So that'll probably be who it'll be, just like it was last year, because that's who the running backs were a year ago. Yeah. Um, so, again, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, preseason starts within, the, what, the next, what, four or five weeks? I think September, early September, I think, is when preseason August starts. August 5th. August 5th. Okay. Next Thursday. It's Next the last Thursday. week without football. <laughs> so preseason football is here, guys. Let it us, is. Let's rejoice because that I'm means we're not far away from waking up on Saturday mornings and tuning in to ESPN to watch college game day because I do that every Saturday when I'm home. Uh, <laughs> when I'm home on a Saturday morning to uh, to do that. But as I always do, I end my show talking about the kids in college football. Um, I will start with the Miami Hurricanes, who has one of their safeties, Avante Williams, suspended for domestic violence. At this time, he has been suspended and removed <sighs> from the team for domestic violence after his arrest. Um, his yeah. stat, from what I've read, um, is not good. <laughs> it's not good for him coming back anytime soon. Um, no, you can't. It's just that's a zero. That's one of those easy zero tolerance kind of deals. Yep, that would be correct. After um, after all that shit with Ray Rice went down yep. almost ten years ago now, none, nothing, absolutely none. Correct. Yep, I agree with that. Um, now, dear, I I watched um their um their press conference at the ACC um, meetings or whatever you want to call them. Um, Coach Diaz was up there. And one of their quarterback, Tierra King, is talking about the NIL. Guys, if you don't know what the NIL is, that's the coalition that's paying football players. Um, him and quarterback, um, who's uh, the, I can't remember the kid who's the quarterback in Florida State, um, that have both kind of taken a spearhead in the in Florida to be the leaders and making sure that their players and teammates get paid the proper way and stuff like that. Mackenzie Milton is the other one I'm thinking of. Mm. That is the other kid that has taken leadership uh, on the NIL front for their for Miami and for FSU. And again, I they, love it. they asked Derek King at the press conference, it's very interesting that you are helping out a rival quarterback. And he said, yeah, he goes, that's fine. He's a rival quarterback, but at the end of the day, we're all trying to – Still play football, but we're all trying to get paid at the same time to do this. So right, I don't have any problem with that. I don't either. You know, it's it's I totally. It'd be I I would I would be more I would be upset if I was a, a Canes fan, and he was out there throwing doing you know football drills with it. Yeah, that'd be you know or, or or you know working on you know playbooks or, or or you know film study or something like that. But this is totally outside the, the game on the field. Correct. 
you know, and so to me, that's where I think it's, I, I'm, I'm cool with it. I don't have an issue with it either. I don't have an issue with it either. No. Uh, yeah. You know, to, you know, to, because, you know, football is such a, a violent sport. It's such a, a dangerous thing. And if you can make, you know, that, that kid in Alabama, he's already projected at over $800,000 in his first year. You know, if he gets hurt, you can, you can, you can survive on $800,000 for a fairly long time. If you, yeah. if you budget it right. Correct. And, 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 and have a very, very nice living for the next 10 or 15 years. If you budget it right. And, right. and not have to worry about working for, for a while. And then, you know, you can go into the end of the one thing that, it, you know, I, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll, um, I hope you'll see, be able to see, you'll, you'll see athletes. We'll see, we'll see fewer and fewer stories of athletes just absolutely burning through their money and having none left when they get out Yeah, because they've gotten that money at at the beginning in college, they had a chance to work with advisors for, for four more years. Mm-hmm. They're not some 21 year old, 22, 23 year old that's got $30 million now. Yep. And well, I've got $30 million. Mm-hmm. I'm going to spend it. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep. Well, the other, again, the next team I'll be covering guys is the team that uh, calls Tallahassee home. Um, and that's the Seminoles. Um, some kind of um, sad news up there as well. Uh, former head coach Bobby Bowden uh, has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Oh, uh, it was cancer. Again, guys, uh, let me just say this. I, I am not an FSU fan uh, at all. Right. right. Um, a shit ton of respect to Coach Bobby Bowden. Let me just say that to you. Right yeah. Um, he was a rival in the 90s with, Cro- with Coach Spurrier being in Florida. Um those games were always marked on the calendar every year, um, mm-hmm. especially here in the state of Florida. Um, we didn't we didn't like the Knowles, they don't like the Gators, and it was a lot of to do with Bobby Bowden's absolute just domination um, for a long time. Um, so I give thoughts and prayers definitely to him and his family. I know it was announced on the radio that he is just accepting uh, the diagnosis. I don't think he's taking any treatment. So I'm, I'm basically he's just saying, you know what, I'm going to let it go. I, I've, uh, I think he's in his 80s. Uh, I think he's, you know, he said, you know what, I'm just going to let it go and I'm going to live the rest of my life, whatever I have left. Um, but definitely, you know, when he does. Uh, now, the stadium is named after him, uh, Dope yeah. Campbell Stadium at Bobby Bowden Field. So his name will be on the stadium forever um, at FSU, no matter if he's alive or if he does pass away. Um, yeah. definitely very, very sad in, 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 in Noel's country. I think it's sad around college football because I think Bobby Bowden was yeah. really a, um, solid coach throughout the years. Um, yeah, he's a great coach. Uh, he, he put FSU back on the map, um, you know, getting players like Charlie Ward and Warwick Dunn and, uh, Derek Brooks and a lot of the kids that called FSU, uh, home during the Bowden era uh, down there. Now, here's the thing. Yeah. To get more, more, uh, you know, on the on a lighter note. Um, <laughs> now, with the realignment of Texas and Oklahoma moving to the SEC, uh, now the question is, how will the ACC shake up? Is there a possible AAC and ACC a combination coming soon, where mm-hmm. the ACC will absorb? the AAC, which means then that case you would have UCF and USF and the rest of the conference, Houston, Memphis, um, all of those teams moving into the ACC. Because of the realignment, it's going to shake up college football, not just the Big 12, but it's going to shake up, obviously, the rest of the country. Yeah. And it's the ACC going to be one of those conferences that stays put. As we discussed last night, it could come down to a possible two power conferences uh, with the SEC and the Big Ten being the two power power two. That could very likely happen. Um, and FSU could be in the Big Ten down the road. We don't, I mean, I don't or they could totally re, you know, it could be a re, you know, you have the yeah. Southern Super Conference and 
Yeah. The Eastern the Super Conference. Sucks. Yeah. Well, the ACC, the ACC. And then what do you, you know, you look yeah. at some of these, you know, some of these teams, I'll pull it up real quick, um, that are not, not very good at the bottom of the, you know, at the bottom of the leagues. Like, um, you know, like uh, the, the, the Maryland and uh, Northwestern or, uh, you know, out west, you've got, you know, um, Cal and UCLA, mm-hmm. and Washington State and Oregon State, uh, you know, or uh, Georgia Tech, Boston College, yep. uh, Missouri, you, uh, Vanderbilt. You know, what do you do with those teams? Yeah. Those teams that stink. Yeah. You know, and you you go to these super conferences. How do you decide what what teams get to be in the super conference? What teams? You know. Are. Yep. And because you know you you you've got your traditional powers. You know your Florida's, Georgia's, Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan State. You know teams that are are generally good. Oregon, USC. But look at all the teams that stink: Colorado, Arizona. Kansas, Kansas, yeah, um, Duke, NC State, Wake Forest. Yep, you know and you're gonna. Have, those are all basketball schools. I mean, right? Exactly. when it comes to football, no, you're exactly right. And and what do you? Well, how how do you? You know what's, you know, and you go to 16 teams in each conference. Yeah, in the the Power Five right now, you know. That's gonna be 50, 80 teams, mm-hmm. and four conference and five conferences, and somebody's gonna get a real easy schedule, and somebody's gonna get an incredibly hard schedule every year. Correct. And, and you're gonna have, you know, you know, if you look at Alabama and they they play in the. And they don't, you know, and they one year they play Kentucky, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, uh, Arizona, or Arizona, hmm. Arkansas, Missouri, Miss, Mississippi State, mm-hmm. you know, and then and Tennessee, you know, and that's like eight or nine games that they're gonna just roll. Yeah. Yep. So you know, I don't know. Yep. So that again, we'll have to wait, see where and and and, and, and you know and and if the and that's assuming that the, the pack the big the Big Twelve breaks up. Yeah, because they may you know, not. If, the, if they may yeah. not, they may be able they may be able to add um, Houston or you know and UCF and or well, yeah UCF and I, I could see I honestly, but I could see the. AAC combining with the Big 12 more than I can see them combining with the ACC. Just because the ACC, you have Clemson in that division. You have Duke and North Carolina. Obviously, those are – North Carolina is a good football team. They have been the last few years. Duke has not been – Duke yeah. has those spurts where they are good. If FSU and Miami – Duke's up and – Duke. Back on track. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you're you're right. I mean, there are teams that are just awful in all of the conferences around the country. So yeah, mm-hmm. it just depends on that where would, it, all, it all falls. Yeah. Yep. And then what do you do? Yep. So, like I said, here's the Florida Gators who are currently in the SEC, and again, we all know mm-hmm. that. Um, Texas and Oklahoma have been invited. I believe they accepted both of them. Yep, except- they accepted the invitation yes, last night. Um, so they will both be in the conference within the next three years. Um, oh, four years. 2025. Four years. July, July 1st, 2025 is when their, their contracts expire and they're allowed to sign new contracts. Did you hear what Steve Spurrier had to say about Texas leaving the Big 12 and heading to the SEC? What? He referred to them. He said, wow, they're coming to the SEC. They can't even win the Big 12. What do you think? You think they're going to win an SEC championship? you got to no. be crazy if you think that Texas is going to win an SEC title. So, just saying. Uh, I think Texas wants to come to the SEC to compete with Alabama. 
I do for too. both. Uh-huh. I, 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 I think, I, I think it's, I know they've struggled for the last four or five years in the, in the pact or in the, the big 12. Right. But I think that they, I think that they're the place that they struggled the most is recruiting. And, yes. you know, and there's not there. Who's in the, who's in the, who's in the AC. If, who gave me a speaking job? <laughs> who's in the pack, who's in the Big Twelve outside of Oklahoma? Oklahoma? Nobody. Texas, Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State. Yeah, and, and, yeah. No, no good teams. No, exactly. Yeah, no. You know why would you would you rather be a scholarship three star athlete at Texas or walk on at Alabama? Walk on at Alabama. Right. Exactly. So now you go to Texas, Texas comes to the SEC, you play Alabama every other year. Play yep. Florida every other year. You play, you know. Georgia. Georgia every other year. Or mm-hmm. every year, depending on which, which side of the bracket they end up on. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you play these, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Florida. Um, LSU. LSU, yep. And then you, you play A&M again. You get to play. You get to, you get to play Oklahoma every year. Still, you get to play A and M, LSU, Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, Florida. That's seven games right there every year, pretty much, or every other year against top elite competition. Yeah, you might not win all of them, but all it takes is winning a couple of them, and you're right back in the thick of it. Now yeah. you've got guys that are willing, you know. Now you've got three star guys that are, you know, you got four star guys that want to come to to Texas to get a chance to play Alabama. Mm-hmm. Because just yeah. think about it, you know, like if you're a four star guy from Florida, and uh, let's say you're a four star tight end from Florida, and you, you know, F- Florida's got a, you know, they're 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 set at tight end, right? And you want to beat Nick Saban, well, you can't go to Texas, mm-hmm. no. you know. You 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 got to go somewhere that's gonna play Alabama once a year. So yeah. that leaves LSU, or Georgia, or Auburn, or Auburn. Yep. You know, Auburn. so those you know you know, or if you're if you're from Auburn, you know, if you're from Auburn, you hate Alabama, you hate Nick Saban, you want to beat Nick Saban every year, and you want to play college football. You're you're and you're talented enough to play college football at the highest level. Mm-hmm. Texas is is straight out. So you're looking at Florida, you're looking at LSU, you're looking at uh, Georgia. Those, you know, those are the three teams that you're going to be. You know, and of course, those. You know, if you're if you're a top flight college athlete, those are the, that's the you know, that's where you're going to want to go play. Yep. You know, and, and Texas has been has been on a down on a on a downturn the last half decade or, or so, and so you know now you get to the you know in 2025 you're like. In 2023, you can start recruiting. Hey, look, we're going to, you know, it's our inaugural season in the SEC. You can be here. You can be part of it. You can be a starter in three years. Mm-hmm. And you can start for us in the, in the, against the SEC. And then same thing in 2024. You know, you're like, hey, look, we're going to play Alabama this year. We're going to play Florida this year. We're going to play Georgia this year. And you can come to Texas, and you can be right in the thick of it. And as opposed to going to Texas and playing Oklahoma State, Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State. Yeah, no, I, I, I'll walk on at Florida. I'll walk on it at Georgia. I'll walk on at Alabama, play some good competition. Yeah. Uh, hell, I'll walk on at Ohio State. They seem to have be in the top, you know, in the top four every year. Mm-hmm. And because nobody's gonna look at you know a a, t- a ten and two Texas team with losses to Iowa State and and Oklahoma or two losses to Oklahoma, no. one in the regular season, one in the in the conference. No, yeah, they're not gonna make a they they'll they'll make an okay bowl game, right? But they're not gonna make a top 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 tier bowl game. They're not gonna you know you're not gonna play Alabama, you're not gonna play Georgia, you're not gonna play Florida. You 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 might play Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might. 
speaking of that, um, the Gators and the UCF, that's the Knights, have agreed to a uh, two-and-one playing thing uh, series. Uh, in 2024 and 2033, they will play in Gainesville, and in 2030, they will come to Orlando in the bounce house to play the Knights there. But they finally have agreed now that Josh Heupel, their uh, AD, has moved on to Tennessee. Uh, the whole thing with him is he was never going to agree to a right. two and one with Florida. It's funny now how uh, UCF has also did a two and one with Houston. Or no, they're playing with Houston. Uh, let me get to the Knights uh, as I speak. Um, a lot of teams think. Actually, I read an article speaking of that. But you were talking earlier about maybe possibly the Big Twelve not folding. One of the articles I read today about you at UCF was that them playing against Houston might be a battle for a spot in the Big 12. Um, obviously, Houston would be the uh, right pick. Being logical that, choice. Logical choice being that they're in Texas, and you already have Texas Tech there. You have TCU there. It would make sense for the the, the Houston Cougars also to join the um, join the conference. Aren't Yep. Aren't they in the AAC right now, Houston? Houston is in the AAC. Yes. That is correct. That is correct. Wasted division. And it looks like they UCF has also scheduled three games with the Maryland Terrapins as well. Uh, mm. like another team that they have scheduled as a power team. Um, again, it's going to be interesting because I know UCF, like everyone else, wants to get out of the AAC and be in a Power 5 conference. Obviously, with the Texas and Oklahoma shift, obviously it opens up some time in the Big 12 for UCF to move to the Big 12, you know, and, and everything, basketball and all that stuff. So, again, we'll have to wait and see if UCF yeah. gets the invite or decides to join the Big 12 um, when everything is all shook up when Texas and Oklahoma moved to the SEC uh -huh. uh, in a couple of years. So um, when I've read too, that Gus Mel's on and company, they're happy with the possibility of changing conferences. They're not worried about if they have to stay in the AAC, that's fine. But they're also not really worried about, you know, the, the thing they're hoping that maybe they'll get a shot at playing in the big 12, because again, both USF and UCF were on their way to the Big 12 a few years ago, and the conference at the last minute changed their mind and pulled the invites for both teams back. Um, as I always do, I end the show with um, USF. Now, just like we were just talking about um, UCF being um, the team that possibly could be in the Big 12, uh, real quick, guys, I am announcing that the Tuesday podcast that I do with Larry Frank will be coming back on August 24th. Bullseye, if you're if the, the name of the podcast, guys, it will be coming back on the 24th. Um, we are going to be interviewing Marquez Blackwell, one of the top quarterbacks for USF. And we are in the works of talking and interviewing head coach Jeff Scott. Uh, I would be electric if we can get Jeff Scott on uh, our <laughs> podcast. Um, but anyway, right uh -huh. now – it's a bad time for USF to be playing football bad. This yeah. team won only one game last year. Um, they need to win more than one game this year. I think they will win more than one game. They can't any worse. Um, yes. Well, unless they lose every game, I don't think that's going to happen. No, uh, they'll be getting that bad. Um, I think the, 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 the first game against NC State is very winnable. They just have to play well. They can't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's what USF did a lot last year. Uh, was make too many mistakes when it came time to do that. Um, but the article that I wanted to kind of jump into is, here are the top 25 USF football games in history. Now, the reason mm -hmm. that there is 25 is this is the 25th year of USF football. Um, they are celebrating their wow. 25th year. Um, number 25 is the 31-16 win over the Cincinnati Bearcats in 2005. They were at home in Tampa. The next one is the 24-7 win over Eastern Carolina two days before Christmas in 2006 in Birmingham. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
That was for the Papa John's dot com bowl. Um, <laughs> the uh, number twenty three is the thirty eight thirty win over Tulsa on October eighteenth of two thousand four. Uh, this was the first. Um, this is when Willie Taggart was head coach, kind of turned the team around. Uh, the next one was on September twenty fifth of two thousand four in Fort Worth, Texas, when they beat the TCU Horn Frogs. 45-44 in two overtimes. Um, they beat Nevada 32-31 September 8th of 2012 in Reno. They beat the Temple Owls 44-23 in Tampa in 2015. Number 19 is the uh, – they were they were ranked 23rd in the country. They beat Texas Tech 38-34 in Birmingham. Um, they beat the Louisville Cardinals 31-28 in two overtimes in 2003. Uh, of October that year, they beat South Carolina 46 39 um, in 2016. They beat the Clemson Tigers in Charlotte, North Carolina 31 26 in 2010. They beat Illinois State 14 13 in 1999. Uh, that was announced as a 22,054 Bulls uh, at Raymond James Stadium. Uh, this was the first time against a ranked Division One opponent in seven tries. So this was their first win. Um, September 30th of 2000, they beat Troy State 20 to 10. Uh, September, uh, November of 2006, they beat West Virginia 24 19 in Morgantown. Um, they beat UCF 31 14 in 2005 in Tampa. They beat the Auburn Tigers 26-23. At that time, Auburn was ranked 17th in the country in 2007. They beat Miami 23-20 in overtime in 2010. They beat Syracuse 45-24 in 2015. They beat the number 11 Kansas Jayhawks 37-34 in Tampa um, in 2008. Uh, they beat Louisville, who was ranked 9th at the time, 45-14 in Tampa. Number six was the 64-12 romping of UCF. They were, at the time, USF was ranked number five in the yeah. country uh, in 2007. Uh, they beat Kentucky Wesleyan 80-3 in 1997. More than 40 years after USF first opened its doors, that was when it all started. They beat Notre Dame 23-20 in 2011 in South Bend. Uh, they beat... Um, now, this one was a defeat, uh, number three, 49-42 to UCF in Orlando at the Bounce House. Yes. Um, they beat FSU in 2009 in Tallahassee, 17 to 7 at the time. FSU was ranked 18th. And number one, uh, when they were ranked number 18 in the country, they beat number five, West Virginia, 21-13 on September 20, 2007, I believe. That was when Pat McAfee, I think, was the kicker for West Virginia. Maybe I'm wrong when I say that, but I think he missed some field goals. Maybe that was when they won in Morgantown. I'm not 100% sure. But USF has done very well against West Virginia in the past. But, again, those are some of the things. This is the 25th anniversary of USF football. Um, again, I'm hoping that I get the opportunity to cover yep. them again uh, this year. Obviously, the first home game is Saturday, September 11th at 1 o'clock as they kick it off against um, Dan Moan and the Florida Gators will be in town to play them. Um, I'm going to assume that Raymond James team will be a full capacity unless COVID continues to rise up and maybe it won't be, but at the time right now, as far as I know, it's going to be sold out. Yeah, um, I imagine it'll be a packed house. But yeah. I'm going to imagine you're going to see three – Gator fans to one Bulls fan, unfortunately. Yeah, probably yeah. three three quarters. It'll be it'll be it'll be full and it'll be three quarters orange and yeah orange and blue. Orange and blue, correct. And blue. I think he just froze up. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. Yeah. Well, everything's back to normal on my side, though, Adam. Uh, the oh, show that's is good to hear. Back to two hours and everything. So, uh, Sweet. You no. Know. If I remember, I'll give you a call this week. 
We got the regular number back too. Okay, cool. The five one two number. Okay. Yeah. And tell Sounds Miranda good. thanks. I will. Yeah. That helped a lot. It's good to hear. Now we're gonna have to Bradley. I don't know. And he's gone. Just like that, he's gone. All right. Wow. Well, we can't sign up without him. Right. It's still going. We're still alive. We're still here. Yeah. And then there were two. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, but, the record album was, and then there were three. Yeah. No, I was thinking of the record album. Mm. But you probably wouldn't get that. I don't recognize that album. I do. Well, don't forget. I'm a, I, don't forget. I've been around a lot longer than you yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. That was done by Genesis in 1978. Oh, okay. That's when Peter Gabriel was still the front. Gabriel, man. Gabriel left the band by then. Oh, was he? I thought he was. I thought he didn't Gabriel leave left until... in 75, and then Steve Did he? Okay. left in 77. Okay. I thought he left in the mid 80s. No, no, no. That's when his solo career just started to take off. Oh, okay. When he after had he that. that monkey, after he shot that monkey. Shot, yeah, shot the monkey. Yeah, he really did. Yeah. He shot to the top of the chart. Yeah. <laughs> that would shock the monkey was his first solo hit, wasn't it? I think that did it No, go actually it wasn't. Well, some might think it, but I thought it was Sawsbury Hill. Mm. And then came Shock the Monkey. I think that's just more successful. And then came all the rest. Mm. Kind of think, you know, you did Shock the Monkey with the sledgehammer as well. Ooh. Now that's going to hurt. Right. If you want to go Simpsons, I can do even worse. <laughs> There's I, a I, there's a Simpsons episode where they mock Plan of the Apes, and I think it's hysterical. I'm just trying to see. Uh, it, oh, it didn't. It didn't go to. It peaked at 29. Shock the monkey. Yeah, mm. I knew that. Wait, where are you reading that from? The Wikipedia article. Oh, sorry. I read Billboard. Hmm. That I have since I was young. I got you. A lot of the kids thought it was weird. Nah. Yeah. But they did. Why are you reading that? <laughs> well, just put on my geekdom. But we all have that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean everybody's got one got one area that you know they they're they're a geek at. Oh yeah. I'm I have many areas that I'm a geek at. Oh dear. Mm. Well, you can qualify for Jeopardy then. Yeah. Some days, some yeah. days are some days are better than others. Ah. Uh, yeah, it all depends on the category. Yeah. Well, we can just find. Hey, I just have another name for game show. Where in the world is Bradley Walker hiding? I. I yeah. Shut the monkey. But. Yeah, I didn't realize he had left Genesis in in the in the mid seventies. I thought it was, yeah. I thought he left in the in the early early oh, mid eighties. No, no. Not right. No. I like I like um. Yeah. Phil Collins era Genesis. And the thing, Phil was not an original member. I thought he was the original drummer. No, no. They fired the original drummer and then he came on and then he came over. Mm. In 1970. Okay. The year I was born. Right. To make you feel old? Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. I may not look 51, man, but I am. Mm -hmm. You're only as old as you feel. Yeah. I feel pretty damn old. But I do have some songs with Peter Gabriel and Steve Hackett in the band. Mm. And when my sister with my, you know, we were going through a list of songs to put on our iPads. And like, I never heard of this. Uh, what, what is it? Oh, boy. Then again, my sister was in all the, just in the, like, you know, stupid stuff. 
She doesn't get half the songs I have on my list or my CDs. I have. She doesn't get half of it. She even had the pulling all nighter. Mm. I have a play. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel, or yeah. you know, it's got over 250 songs on it. Yeah. A lot of pop punk from the mid 2000s. Uh, just when things started to go down. Yeah. There's a, there's not a lot that I like since 2010. I think 2003, I think, was more. 2005 was more like it. Oh, I like a lot of the mid-2000s pop punk, but pop after punk. that, that's when... I think by 21, 22, your music go, your what you like is what you like, and everything coming along is just kids' music. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, back when I was young, alternative, you know, well, we didn't call it that yet, but, you know, it, it right. makes it. Well, they used to call it, if you're part of this expression, they used to call it college music. Mm. Yeah. That's what they used to call uh, alternative. They used to call it college music. I'm like, what the hell does college music mean? Right. But I, was, college. But, I, but I heard this stuff before it became fashionable. Right, right. You know, we well, yeah, just I, understand the term. Like, I like a lot of college music. Yeah, I've been in college to hear and stuff. I mean, what? I have a, a soft a soft spot for 80 cents pop. Uh, now you're talking my language. Do you know? Uh, I think it's going. I'm not sure how to pronounce. It. I think it's going. Uh, you're a strange animal. I think so. I love that song. Mm-hmm. But she forgot the national anthem said pop. I don't recognize that one. You're not as old as I am, though. Mm-mm, no. But if you heard it, you might you might know it. Yeah, I like. Um, mm, there's one. Um, oh, you'll never get it. Yeah, I don't remember it. I I can see the video for it, but I can't remember the name of the song. Mm-hmm. If I was allowed to play it, I would do it right now. Right. But I don't think I can. Or if I have my synthesizer in with me right now, <laughs> I can play it for you. But that's in the garage. Mm. Yankees win. I, I just wish I could play it for you right now without getting into trouble. Right. But it, if you heard it, you, you would know it. Believe me. Mm. I consider the national anthem of synth pop. Would you like a hint? Yeah. You drive it. Cars? You drive it. Oh, God, you are young. It's not coming to me. The name of the song is called Cars. We're talking early days, though, man. We're talking 19. Who's it by? Gary Newman. Okay. I'm sure now. I probably do know it. I just don't know the you know right. know it by that you know. Drive my parents nuts. Mm. My sister and brother wouldn't know because they were too young to recall it, but I do. Don't forget, now we're talking 40 years ago. Right. Yeah, I do know this song. Yeah. Yep, yep. I do know that one. That's a good tune. Yeah. I call Hopefully it the, we... the National Anthem of Synth Pop. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. I love, um, I like Video Killed the Radio Star. Yep. You also know, that was. Big hit. Night, you know, that was the first song that ever played on MTV? Yes, but that was not the first video ever made. 
No, no, it was the first video ever. That was the first video to premiere on um, MTV. That's how it became popular. Uh, So it's, uh, I want to say April 30th, 1979. I believe it was, it was April of 70. Was it August? August 1st. Tomorrow. No. Yeah. No. Oh, Sunday. Sunday, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's 31 days in. in. Yeah. April, yeah. June, and Montana, all the rest of cold weather except in the summer, which is not often. Yeah. Right. Right. It's a Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> April, June, and Montana, all the rest of cold weather except in the summer, which is not often. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 40 years right. 40 years ago yeah yeah on sunday 40 years i'll tell you one thing though they look old now yeah even martha looks old <laughs> 40 years ago sunday mtv was born yeah wow and yet, I didn't get it until two years later. Mm. Our cable system sucked. I got you. Yeah. My cousin had, though. See, so here's the thing Morris County didn't get MTV until 1983, but Suburban Cable Vision, which was only a half step away from where we were, right? Uh, county wise, they got it right away. They got the good stuff early. They got Nickelodeon yeah. early. They got MTV early. We had to wait. We had to wait four years to get Nickelodeon. I'm like, you dirty. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. You get the, you get the idea, right? I get the idea. I get the idea. Yeah. Um, but no, I like. Um, I, I like. I like music. I just like music. I. Yeah. I have. I have a, a pair of um, in ear earbuds, which are in my pocket, of course. I got a pair of these. And um, when I'm at work, I just put one in my ear and put my my earmuffs on and play music all day. Yeah. Earmuffs I, even in the summertime. Mm. Yeah, it's it's hot, but it's worth it. That no, that that's a little weird to me. I'd rather have the music. <laughs> I know, but I just find earmuffs in the summer kind of weird. Uh, I'm indoors in um, a shop. So yeah. we have to we have to wear hearing protection. Okay, okay, I get it now. All right, that makes sense. And then it's just it's nice to have hearing protection on, and then ear. Oh, of uh, course. Up, 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 an earbud in, and away we go. Yeah, I just thought it was a, I just thought it was a generational thing. No, no, it's just because I like the music. It helps me concentrate. Oh, of course. I get it. It, it, it keeps my mind from getting distracted. Right. So I, I just I can I have something else to focus. You know what I do is so repetitive all day. Then having them, you know, having something else what to focus on. Uh, factory work. I build ovens. Right, right. So I, you know, it's the same thing all day, every day, and so that distraction keeps me from getting distracted. Same with me when I have, you know, when I have my jobs. Yeah, it's just nice to have the. Um, The, the distraction in my in right. my brain, so my brain doesn't just wander off and leave me behind. Yeah, which happens to a lot of people. But right, mm-hmm. I got a, I got a little bit of everything on that playlist. Uh, well, that's I'm a good sure. song, Lunatic Fringe. Yeah, can't post it up though, right? Right. Nah, uh, it's a shame. I wish I could have had a look at it. Uh, uh, let me see. I might be. No, that's. Uh, so we can I can. Her notes. Uh-huh. Uh, fine, whatever. Uh, share. There we go. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I guess Bradley's not coming back. Apparently not. I gotta. Fine, there you are. I don't know if you'll have. Uh, you may have to have the app to look at it. I don't know. Ah, it just came up on my on my uh, mail here. Yeah. We have a look at that. Uh. Ooh. Okay, the playlist. 
I don't know if it's going to let you access the playlist or not. Well, we'll find out. All right. Mm. It'd be nice if it would. Seven plus hours. Okay. I can also screen cap it and send it to you if that's. Oh, well, let me just see what comes up here first. All right, sounds good. Right. Be quiet. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, totally. Experience Oh, excuse me for a second. Because I play this sometimes on piano. Mm. And it goes a little something like this. Yeah. Like, 